<clears throat> All right, hello. <clears throat> hello, friends. Thanks for joining me. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. <clears throat> All right. Let's make it official. This is Daily Art Adventure number 745. Can you believe it? <laughs> and I've called it something like tweaking abstract figures in a painting. I'm trying to convey this is not a figurative painting. It's not a painting of human figure. It's a scenic painting in which there are figures. So very different uh, animal than a figurative painting. I have two paintings that I can work on here today. One is this one that I thought was all finished. Um, I did this a week ago to Saturday for the Weaver Street Market, commissioned for the Weaver Street Market. And uh, of course it has, as you can see, I haven't counted them actually. How many people? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I count the dog. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Ooh, and then here it gets 21 for sure. And one, two, three, four, five or six. Anyway, <clears throat> of course, some of these very abstract. All right. So let me, let me just talk for a second about how I do figures. Now, what, what I'm not demonstrating in this particular broadcast is how I get to this point. <clears throat> I'll describe it very, very briefly, very simply. I start out extremely abstract, by which I mean very often taking a brush like this and making just a slash, just a slash mark uh, for each person. Then little by little by little, and it's not so much a process of me controlling the, uh, the process. It's more a matter of letting there be a free flow of process. And that's so hard to explain to those of you who are uh, not familiar with that. So go back and watch me. But what I'm doing in this broadcast is final tweaks. Um, so I actually thought I was done with this painting, but then there turns out there's several little things that I, I'm, the, the figures are just close enough to believable and real that once they get so close, you have to make sure, that, anyway, there has to be a balance between abstraction and realism, okay? For, for that, this is close to the subject, close related to the my recent verbiage. I'm going to try to no longer ever say loose brush strokes, which is ubiquitous. I've said it, all my professors said it, because I think the word loose conveys sloppy drawing. So instead I'm saying, I'm gonna change it to you know, tight, accurate drawing with energetic brush strokes. Now the way I achieve tight drawing is by step by step by step by step, not all at once. Anyway, okay, let's let's get to work then. Um, <clears throat> and because I do this goofy thing of um, using pencils, I actually can use pencils to aid in realism. So that's what I'm gonna do right here. I'm using the pencils as sort of a shorthand way of indicating what some of the changes I want to, want to make. Um, yeah, this guy's got an awkward bulge right there, so I'll cut that off. The shoulder's a little bit, I can make him just a little bit more broad-shouldered. I think he'll, fe he'll feel better about that. <laughs> um, it, as you can see, the great majority of the people in this painting are going away from us because they're going into the store, right? I've got one, the one guy right in the middle is coming toward us with his dog. And by the way, I love his dog. I feel like I really hit a home run there. Um, the dog is looking up at his master. Um, again, that was, a, that was I, I would say, a complete accident. 
that would be overstating the case just a little bit. Oh, you should have a leash on him. There you go. So let me do a leash. To say there was a complete accident would be of an overstatement. But there's always, in, in my figurative, there's always a high degree of serendipitous accidents that happen. Um, the reason it's not, a, it's not exactly accurate to say it's a complete accident is because I set up this environment where happy accidents can happen. Bob Ross's best uh, best word, by the way, happy little accidents. Um, again, this this guy, I think his sleeve can go over that way. This one right here, she has some serious issues. Um, she needs a, a, some hips, and it looks like she's wearing a shawl, and that's not a, <laughs> compared to what everybody else is reading. If it was a, if it was a fall, cold, winter day, that would be appropriate. Everybody else is in short sleeves, so for her to have a shawl is inappropriate. So I need to do something with uh there we go with those lines right there uh likewise this woman she needed already did this line here she needed a, a waist tuck and her one shoulder and i'm getting way too much detail verb verbally for us here um i usually try to avoid uh facial features because it gets cartoony. So as close as I've got to facial features, I have three people here wearing sunglasses. Sunny day, sunny morning, so appropriate. That, that, that look, that's okay. I don't want any other features. Now, let's say on this person right here is facing toward us. As close as I'll get to a facial features, drawing a horizontal line right across where the eyes would go. But one trick I've learned is to make that line go beyond the face, then we get the benefit of the realism, the dark mark across the eyes, with the addition of abstraction so that it's not, doesn't feel quite as contrived. All right, let's start doing some painting. I'm gonna start over here with one of the easier problems, which is this, uh, the woman with the woman with inadequate hips. <laughs> um, here's where I want you to pay attention if you're interested in learning how I do it. And the, again, this is the, the last, last layer on, the, on this painting. It is, and this is final steps. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not going to go tongue painting. Right, that would just be awful. So this stroke needs to look, that was a good one, needs to look like it was a bit of an accident. And the fact that this, this stroke has a tail that goes down here, same thing as I did up here. In, oh, wait, 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 sorry, I missed, missed it. So I, I just did a stroke. In fact, I'll redo it like this. So my, I, let the, I let the stroke have a tail that is abstract. This is not representational. Then I put another mark right there. All right, so now she has hips on one side, a hip on one side, and I need, think she needs just a little bit of the same on the other. So do you see, you, you saw that, I did it twice, where I dragged the brush literally off, off the subject matter. Let's go up here now her shirt. If I remove some of those horizontal, um, you know what, I like this color that I just put down. I like it better than what was there. So I'm going to add um, there. I like that. Okay. I'll save those brushes that have blue paint on them because I suspect I'll be doing more of, of the same, more, more blue stuff at some point. Uh, so now I'm mixing up a, a flesh tone color. I've talked about, I talked about this last week when I was drawing. Beware of that word flesh tone. <laughs> um, whose flesh? <laughs> whose tone, right? So I am conscious of that. I usually try to make my figure, most of my figures, or at least a high percentage of them, uh, 
racially ambiguous so that people can't just just can't get upset one way or the other about me. All of my people end up being looking vaguely Hispanic. <laughs> I'm being sort of funny because but by which I mean they either have really good tans or they're Hispanic. Again, forgive me. I'm, 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 I, well, first of all, the reason I have the freedom in my spirit to jest about th such things is because I am remarkably free of racist proclivities. And the reason I'm remarkably free of racist proclivities is because of my inward, inside spiritual journey. Those of us who are spiritually sensitive recognize that a great part of human human interaction requires us to go down and I'm peace but by going down which are everything in our old in our regular normal human personality wants to go up we want to ascend but those of us who are on a spiritual journey we go oh you know what ascending is not the way to fulfillment, success, happiness, and so on, especially if you're married. I, I've said before, if you're married and you forgive me for, uh, uh, what's the word? I, not ranting. But uh, if you're married and you haven't apologized to your spouse in a week, you, my friend, have a stinky poo marriage. <laughs> and it's only people who have a, a, a fairly high degree of spiritual, and by that I mean people who are not religious, but people who uh, are accustomed to navigating in invisible realities like love, hate, respect, nobility, honor. Those are invisible realities. All right, I'm really in trouble now, aren't I? Oh, I could go on, believe me. If nothing is true, then it is not true. Then the statement that nothing is true is not true. <laughs> there you go. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Um, if nothing, if you think nothing is true, then the statement nothing is true cannot possibly be true. <laughs> uh Um, the most important um, rendering that I do, this is pretty universal with all of my f abstract figures, the most important stage or phase or, or layer of, of abstraction is in fact um, the, when, I, when I paint them in the negative, like I'm doing in this woman right here. So I'm not painting the woman, I'm painting around the woman. and. Uh, that is the most accurate, realistic, tight, and that's in fact that's too what I just did. It's too tight, so let's fix that up. No problem. Oh, that reminds me, a, a really good tip. <laughs> Don't you like it when somebody announces, <laughs> proclaims, "Hear ye, hear ye!" <laughs> what I'm about to say is really important. <laughs> a person like that has issues. <laughs> Okay, so having said that, hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> what I'm about to say is really important. Okay. <laughs> um, here's a good trick, really helpful trick for, again, rendering. You understand why these figures have to be abstract, right? Because the whole painting has energetic brush strokes. Not to say loose. <laughs> energetic brush strokes. And if I were then to, to graduate to tight brush strokes down here, it would not feel, or it would not, the, the painting would not hang together. It'd be like one painting and another painting. So the, the, the um, I like saying one word three times in a row. <laughs> so it's important that the figures match the rest of the painting in looseness. Same thing we say about lettering which is where many, many people make a big mistake. 
All right, having said that, here's a good trick. Here's the hear ye, hear ye part. Here's a good trick. Go ahead, sometimes, sometimes, go ahead and overdraw your figures. Too much detail, too much accuracy, not enough energy, okay? Because with figures, they've got to be correct. You just, you cannot afford to have weird, you know, deformed, deformed looking human beings in your paintings. So go ahead and, as I say, overdraw them. And then, like I just did over there a minute ago, and then come back and mess them up. Okay, that's, that's the hear ye, hear ye part. <laughs> go ahead and overdraw and then mess them up, like with a rag or some scratching or something. That's a really good tip. <laughs> as I said, don't you just love it when people announce? <laughs> Hear ye, hear ye, I am brilliant. I hope you listen to this. <laughs> That's a really good tip right there. This woman needs a little more highlight on her shoulder. And then likewise on her face. Ooh, her face just disappeared because it's exactly the same color. Um, now, I guess it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Okay, I've got some sort of flesh tone on my brushes. Let's go around and see if there's somewhere else that needs flesh tone. Um, I'll go ahead and say it anyway. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, all of these figures are out of my head. Now, I do sometimes take photographs and use the photographs of, of people to help me, but I, I did not do that in this case. All of these are completely out of my head. So then that goes without saying, but I'll say it, that in order to do this, you need to have some facility for drawing the human figure, okay? Uh, and um, the ability to draw the human figure comes from two separate and distinct activities. One is looking at the human figure, which is what most of us call live drawing, you know, what you do in art school and beyond. And I've, I've, <laughs> I've made this announcement in the last several weeks. I probably, you probably heard here. Um, <laughs> I decided a couple months ago to go ahead and put the credit or blame where it belongs. Um, it's a funny, it's sort of a funny thing, kind of personal here, but I'll go ahead, go ahead and tell you. Um, I do not do live figure drawing. I would like to very much as an artist. I feel kind of dumb that I don't. But uh, my wife, who is not an artist, does not, cannot see how I can gaze on a naked woman and not be excited by that. <laughs> she said, forgive me for being too crude, but a couple years ago, um, I was asked to do a video by Jerry's Artorama. I did a lot of work for them, and we'll do again in the future, I'm sure. And uh, we were going to do a figure drawing thing. So, I, And my wife had been out of town for like a week or two weeks, or she was gone for a long time. And so I said, hey, Nancy, is it would be okay if I, you know, I'm going to do a figure drawing, which means nude figure drawing, for a video. <laughs> And now this this is subject has come up many times over the years, and I'm gonna and and anyway she said to the guy who's in charge of the studio, she said she said, not my horny husband. <laughs> so there you go, for what it's worth. So I'm blaming my wife, which is where the blame belongs for I, I not doing. Now that means I can. There's still all kinds of things I can do. One is I can draw from, from, you know the the. Uh, drawings and figurative photography and so on and so on and so forth. But anyway, I know that sounds kind of crazy because you won't hear many other artists admit to, out loud that they, that they won't do live drawing. Uh, but it's because of my wife. <laughs> and uh, I, we've been married 39 years. And here's the, here's the cool part. That at, at, at so far, you think, you're an idiot. Well, here's the part that you'll think, oh, maybe you're not an idiot. Here it is. 39 years, very happily married, and all that that, all that that suggests. 
and uh, I'm not about to jeopardize or, or violate my wife for my career. So there's two things you have to do to be a good figure drawing. One is you have to look at figures. And for most people who are not married to my wife, that would mean nude figure drawing, which I absolutely affirm, mm -hmm. believe in. You all should do it because you're not married to my wife. Um, you understand. If, if your spouse feels the same way, then you better take a, take a serious look at how happy your marriage is and what it's worth to you. Um, again, I think she's wrong. She's completely wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying here? And I've told her she's wrong repeatedly. <laughs> And she's not an artist, so she doesn't believe me. Um, but the other way to learn how to draw figures is what I call by rote, R-O-T-E, by memorizing. And uh, I'm, I, uh, several months ago, I did, uh, I did several videos, and I look forward to doing a whole bunch more. And uh, drawing, learning the human figure by rote means taking books like these, and there's a ton of this online, and and not just looking at them, but drawing them. So years ago, I drew every single drawing in this particular book. I have not done that. I've talked about I talk about these books all the time. In fact, I should post on on my YouTube community the titles: George Bridgman, Jack Ham, and Andrew Loomis. In my opinion, the three. Uh, in American, in English, the three greatest anatomy books ever printed. One goes back 100 years, 80 years, and 60 years. That's how old each of those are. So this is not some recent thing. Anyway, so um, there are two things you have to do. One is look. Now, okay, so, so let me finish the topic. So wait, so I can't do live figure drawing? Well, I'm screwed. Well, not really. <laughs> I mean, yes, I would prefer. I really would absolutely prefer because I think it's better. And that's what I recommend you do, unless, again, unless you're married to somebody like my wife. It's not worth jeopardizing my happy marriage for that, even though I think she's wrong, and I've told her that repeatedly. Um, but, uh, but you can still draw people, good grief. Do you know what I mean? I can draw clothes figures all day long. And, of course, part of the irony is, at least from a man's point of view, a semi-clothed or almost nude uh, female figure is much more alluring than a than a naked figure. And again, I've told my wife that. Again, it's her prerogative to not believe me, and she doesn't. So, end of argument. I'm not going to take it up anymore with her. I'm just say, okay, I'll make do. But I am a huge believer in what I just showed you. In I'm a huge believer in. Um, learning to draw the human figure by rote. And that's what helps me do this. Okay, now by no means, I'm not claiming to be, not at all, not claiming to be world-class figure drawer. I mean, I look at like Da Vinci paintings or all the old classic paintings. <laughs> Honestly, I look at a Da Vinci painting and go, dang, I need to go cut up some dead people. <laughs> or uh, I, meant, I meant to say actually, uh, uh, um, Michelangelo. I look at a Michelangelo Sistine Chapel, you know, and I go, dang, I need to cut up more dead people. <laughs> cut up more as if I've cut up any. <laughs> How do those guys have time in their busy, busy art career to go? <laughs> it just blows my mind anyway. I can't wait to read your chats. Too much information, <laughs> Uncle 60. You got that right. You got that right. That was way too much information. <laughs> I thought it as I, I thought it before I said it, actually, this time. And I said it anyway. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh, bless your all little hearts. <laughs> oh. I said, this guy needs to be just a little bit wider than he is. Oh, which brings up a topic which I've talked about many times, and I'll just mention it again very briefly. Uh, you will notice that all the figures in my paintings 
pretty much always. They're always thin. Uh, and in that sense, they are not uh, realistic because, at least in America, people are not thin. <laughs> I'll put it that way. I won't say anything more negative than that. Um, but if you make it, now, and this is not this is not at all related to the the photoshopping of models by photographers, body shaming, all that crud you you see that just stuff, which I basically agree with that you know the that we shame our our women into feeling if they're not a size zero, you know that is ridiculous. I have daughters and granddaughters. I'm, I'm aware of that. But this is not that. Uh, photography is not always painting. The painting, the rules are not always the same. And uh, this is one of those cases where the rules are different. Um, if you make your figures realistic, that is to say wide, um, they, they, they get too much, they draw too much attention to themselves. It, if, you, if you make your figures realistically wide, it looks like you're trying to indicate somebody. Like, who's that? Who's that supposed to be? Um, and generally, you, you're not trying to indicate any person. You're just trying to indicate um, humanity. There's a, the, in essence, forgive me, these are a little bit like mannequins. That's exactly correct. These are essentially mannequins that we're painting. So that, in other words, that they're easily ignored because you don't pay any attention to them because they're just, you know, figures. And that's what I want. I'm not trying to say that all the people in America are this thin or all the people in America ought to be this thin or all the cool people that shop at Weaver Street. No, 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 I'm not saying anything. That's precisely why I do the figures thin so that I, it doesn't, you don't get the impression that I'm trying to preach some message about body shape or convey, you know, anyway. I'm almost done here. Just a few little, so all the marks that I'm making, I want them to be energetic so as not to say loose. I want them to be energetic. They almost need to, they, no, they need to look like they were rendered accidentally. That, oh, I just dropped my brush and it made that mark, so, so to speak. Again, going back to that old Italian term that I've mentioned, sprezzatura. doing a little bit of faint highlights on some of these figures. I don't want too much attention drawn to them. <sighs> All right, I think She's okay. He's okay. I think they're okay. I gave this guy a thumb and a forefinger, and that's just enough. Um, you'll notice, me perhaps, that most of my legs just fade to virtually nothing. Um, just a smudge for a shoe there. All right, that's the end of that painting. I can change in ear monitors here for a moment. All right, change paintings. I think that one's done. 
Now back to the wedding painting. Same there, it's in the same state, very close to finished. I've already worked on these figures quite a bit. Let's start over here with these ones. In fact, in fact, I'll move you guys so that hopefully I won't forget to move you. you do the same trick, use some pencils. So this woman, again, all of these figures kind of happen partly by accident. Do you understand? Now there's something, okay, let me, this guy's face is too, he's too jowly, a little bit too wide at the bottom, so just gonna give him a taper there. Maybe widen the top of his head just a tiny bit. This woman is facing to our right and her arms are crossed. Ooh, you know what would be nice? It'd be really, it's, it's rendered closely enough that um, I'm gonna make, I'll go ahead and do it right now. I'm gonna make her, um, her like full, arms fully crossed with her, her other hand. Um, let's give a little bit more of her neck showing. Well, I thought I was going to go along and do pencil, but I got stuck on this one woman already. So there we go. Can you see that? So now uh, let's do the, the top of her dress um, across her chest here. It's just realistic enough, but not quite the right shape. So if I just make it straight, I think it'll be okay. Hmm. I'll come back to her later. Let's, let's go back. To, let's go to this guy now little wider at the temples and a little narrower at the bottom of his head. So here I'm negative painting, right? Which is when I typically the most the most accurate or tight part of, of my figures is rendered in negative painting. It's like I'm doing right now. I'm not painting the man, so to speak. I'm painting what is not the man. And, and usually that's the most <laughs> Hi uncle I see I see that comment good for you good for you so if you yes if you use too much opaque what do you do um, then you let it dry hopefully you used liquid or or uh, alkyd titanium, one or the other, so it's dry the very next day. And they do, you glaze. Usually that, that often takes care of it, or at least to a large degree. You glaze and redraw and do it again. Yep. All right. This man's shirt. And I, I love the color. I mean, it's hard. It's a very nondescript, dirty, pale green. That was almost a meaningless sentence, wasn't it? But it does have a very slight green to it. And it's not quite the right shape. You see? The collar should come up there. There we go. There we go. Then he's clearly wearing a bow tie. I say clearly. <laughs> He's wearing st stud um, buttons, you know. Yeah, two buttons. That's good. Let's go back to negative painting. I don't mean painting when I'm in a bad mood. I mean, I cut off his shoulder there. And by the same, now positive painting, his shoulder needs to be broader out here. Now, a little bit overdrawn. I was talking a little while ago. So draw it, and then if necessary, mess it up. He's believable. 
she is almost this woman you go back to the first woman now she's almost believable um but she um needs just a little bit of a tuck at her waist right here it's there but you can now frankly okay i talked about whoa, 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 about the whole body shaming thing in society and I claim that I'm not part of that and I do claim that but at the same time I know what so to speak and I, I mean this almost in a cartoony sense of the word I know what an idealized uh, female figure shape is of course and and I do I give the woman just a little bit of that slight exaggeration very 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 slight very slight nothing approaching like a uh, superhero you know wonder woman type stuff that would that would i don't want people to look at the figure and say ew <laughs> oh ooh, la la i don't want you know but i want her to be okay so i just went over the line to wonder woman shapes so i'm gonna undo a little bit there I want it to look like I accidentally rendered a really fine female and male shape. But I want it, it has to look, again, accident is almost the best word for it, really. It has to look like an accident. Okay, now a little bit of a leg where? Oh, yeah, one kind of going back. Just a hint of legs. And again, in this case, I think it's appropriate for them just to fade out. That's good. Okay, now let's go to this woman. I'm going to zoom in even a little bit more right here. The fact that her arm comes across in front of her, again, was a was an accident, if you will. Sometime at some point, excuse me, I'm going to go close the door. At some point, I made a mark and it just and then came back later and said, "Oh wait, that looks kind of that kind of looks like uh, her arm is in front of her." See, that's that's the way it goes. It's like pictures in the clouds, right? When you're when with a kid and you're on a summer day laying in the grass, and you play pictures in the clouds game. That's very much what I do with my figures. I make a mess, and then I hope for an interpretation. Okay, now back to this girl. She looks good, but she's overdrawn. I'm using the term she's drawn in too accurate, tight, and fastidious of a manner. Does that make sense? So I just did what I talked about a little while ago. Draw it, overdraw it, and then mess it up. What is ironic is you can, you can mess it up quite a lot. Very much. You can mess it up very much. And, and yet the, the realism of the figure um, persists. It still looks like a real person. I know, she's missing a, a shoulder on the other side of her. There we go. Oh, on the top of her. Blouse. I don't even. What do you call the part across the front of her chest here? I'm sure, there's the bodice. Is that the bodice? It's the wrong shape again. So, and if there's any any cleavage at all, there is. Now, I want it to be so subtle. It's just because I want it. To, I, I, you know, that's that's almost like facial features. It's too much. So, I have to be very careful. All right, I hope this is helpful to some of you. I don't think, I've never done a broadcast. Whoop, whoop, that's too bright, too light and bright. I've never done a broadcast where I show the final stages of, or the final stage of um, rendering these, these abstract figures, which is what I typically call them, abstracting your figures into your painting is the name of a class that I've taught many times. Okay. By the way, just for, 
interesting, maybe, detail. Um, all the bridesmaids at uh, Saturday's wedding were wearing black. And uh, I don't re think I've ever seen that before. I'm sure I'm, I'm not, I don't pay attention to fashion at all. I hardly pay attention to clothes. I just don't. Um, but I, I, I don't think I've ever done that, seen that before, where all the bridesmaids were wearing black. And uh, artistically speaking, big fan of that. And it was really, it was really effective. Um, Plus, I couldn't help but think that all the bridesmaids will be will be able to wear this dress many, many times in the future, which is not usually the case with bridesmaids' dresses, you know. Oh, I'm gonna have to move this strap. Darn. Again, so it's often when I'm I I'm I'm focusing right now on this figure right here, and it's often in moments like these that I will inadvertently overdraw the figure. That is to say, oh, too tight, too realistic, so to speak. And realism is not the word, because it's got to be accurate. But too tight, I guess, is the best way. As I've just got right there. And, and uh, then I'll come back and just mess it up. And again, it's always surprising to me after you can mess up quite a bit and still retain the believability of the figure. Right now I'm playing around with the idea of completely nah, losing the edge of ramen. I decided, oh, that's not, I don't like it, but maybe just a part of a pencil line might be good enough. I think you saw how I made an accurate line and then a couple abstract lines. Now, for, <laughs> this is a funny one. For some reason, <laughs> there are more women than men in this, in the background of this painting. <laughs> I don't know why. Again, it's partly because I just, I, I draw in a very abstract manner, and they either turn into men or women <laughs> without, my, <laughs> without my permission, if you understand what I mean. I don't force it, I just draw a mess, and that's like, oh, that looks kind of like a woman. Oh, that looks kind of like a man. And I ended up with a very, I usually try to keep them kind of even. Did not happen this time. Okay, almost, almost on this girl. Her hip, little carve there and again a little tuck on her waist just a little uh, you know I'm not sure I like that leg but I'm not sure I can move it I, I have two women here both of their legs are Splayed. Oh, dog on it. I do not like that. Okay, well, here we go. A little major surgery. I, I want to fix this without looking like I fixed it. You know what I mean? So let's see if I can pull that off. So make all this area. All right, I think, I've, I think I've managed to do that. Now just a very, very abstract leg. And if that's the case, then, then I need to carve the edge of her um, her dress down here, I think, a little bit. Now, once again, it's overdrawn. All right, I think that's okay.
go all the way up to her head again for just a minute. And hair across that part of her forehead and I think she'll look fine. All right, I think those are good. And then, uh, now, this batch of people, so I'm gonna move you so you're not so much in my way. Nope, hang on, now that, I, now that I step back and look at these guys over here, I feel like the man at the top is, is, is too stark. He's just too drawn, so I'm, I'm simply gonna drag I think that's better. I want to make it just a slight, slight, slight highlight up there on his forehead. <laughs> and while I was here with this nice color, I said, oh wait, that color would look good on some of these other people. All right, no, I'll leave it, leave it back over to these guys now. I'm going to pick up my pencils and do some of my early marks, perhaps. Um, okay, this woman looks pretty good, except she looks like she's leaning forward. Part of the reason is that her hand comes too far down, so... I don't want her leaning forward. And this, I think, is this other woman's arm. But I don't like the way it looks. It doesn't, doesn't work very well. And her arm is too short. I think I'll give her longer hair. This man up here, he looks pretty good. I can give him a, a long tie instead of a bow tie. How about that? So I don't have too many bow ties. So both of my, you know, both of my wedding guests. It was a, it was a, some, some men had ties and some did not. Some men had bow ties and some did not. That's what I meant to say. Everybody had a tie. Okay, let's do some dark flesh tone. This, whoops, whoops, whoops. Well, I guess I'll start with this woman needs a shoulder back there. And this woman needs a redrawn arm. This needs, this woman needs some a good grief! What's a what's a what's this part of the anatomy? A woman, the the classy French term for woman's chest. I don't mean her breasts. I mean her chest. Dé, décolletage, décolletage. You can tell. Well, again, I'm not I'm not a fashion guy. I think that's it. This man's got a hand out in front of him. I'll put a I'll put a cup or a glass in that hand. I can make his face slightly darker. Ooh, this woman, her head is nice. She's looking to uh, looking into the picture, but um, her arm is all wrong. All right, let me just add some white to this mixture I've got here. And come back and do I can make this one's face you know it somehow it ended up a little bit long. Here we go. So give her 
bit of a neck. playing around here with I'm not happy totally happy with the, that arm's okay this woman's arms are not okay well her that straps in completely the wrong place so let's see what happens <laughs> this so this what you see me doing now is more typical of what I do in the early stages so I've, I've just I simply backed up on this woman I said that gone back, so to speak, back to the drawing board. And evidently I dropped one of my pencils somewhere. Oh well. Um, the bridesmaids were all wearing black, but they were, are not all wearing the same style of dress. Hmm. How about almost as if this woman had her hand in a pocket, even though, of course, she doesn't have pockets. But if she did have a pocket, maybe that kind of position. So it's like a hand. Um, on her thigh. That might be one that might work. Go back to some dark brushes, dark paint <laughs> brushes with dark stuff on them so that I can eliminate some of this, some of this mess. That might work. So she, this one, now she's got her, her arms sort of at an angle. Oh, and if I put a, if I put a, a glass in it, it'd be very, and so these two, both of these, this woman and this man both have uh, glasses in their hand. That'd be very natural, you know, if they're, if they're came together, if they're married, if they're a couple, whatever. Very typical for a couple to go to the drink bar together, right? So, very. Yes, these are the absolutely the kind of stories that I make up in my mind. Absolutely, when I'm, when I'm painting figures. I put people in families and couples and so on. There we go. I added a slight bit of violet, purple, purple and um, permanent rose to what was on my brushes that matched the the color that was already there quite well. Um, uh, real briefly, another thing that I try to make sure that I'm doing in the early stages of my roughing in figures like this, and I do it right, right near the beginning. Um, this is a recent habit that I've learned the hard way. I try to make sure, first of all, I, I typically draw from the head down, start here and draw down with brushes or whatever. And I try to make sure the heads are tilted so that I don't have too many um, straight heads. In fact, in this painting, I don't really have any. This woman's head is straight on her body, but her whole body is slanted. Tilt here, tilt there, there, and same thing with the other three figures. So um, I'm quite quite happy with um, 
how they're coming across. Um, it's I made the mistake for way too long of in my crowds of people of too many heads were held high. They looked like people on parade, which was not a good sense, a good look. So for some reason, I have one, two, three, four, five women and two men. That's very unusual. I hope that's okay with the bride and groom when they see their painting. Let's mix up. Now, I don't know that they had stemware. I don't, I'm sure they did. they did at the table. But during the cocktail hour, I'm not sure that they had stemware. But they do now, so there you go. <laughs> For the next however many centuries this painting lasts, everybody will assume that the guests were drinking from stemware. Hold the power that I have as the artist. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can indicate in the most subtle manner a little bit of shape on this woman's chest. It, it, it's almost like if somebody thinks I did it on purpose, then I've overdone it. Does that make sense? Some of you may be realizing, perhaps for the first time, why it is that I say that realism is easy and abstract realism is harder. Well, here's why. When you are, when you are copying, either from nature or from a photograph, you have the, the reference right there in front of you, and all you have to do is copy it in a way that's very easy. And as you can see from what I'm doing here, I'm having to invent and inventing is, is a lot harder than copying. I see other wedding painters, many other wedding painters that do portraits, albeit rather cartoony portraits, <laughs> I must say. But they do portraits of, you know, all the, the wedding guests or the wedding party or something. Now, one thing I know for sure, they're not during, doing that during the reception. Yes? Are you from yeah. Come on in. It hasn't come out yet. Um, so, I mean, and that's fine if people want to do that. That is... Um, Render all the guests. Now, I've been asked a couple times, you know, to do the mother of the bride or the, you know, this or that person. And that seems very reasonable to me. But it seems very counter. It does not seem reasonable to me to, to render all the guests. It's way too much attention, in my opinion. I've got a, a dull gray on my brush and it, it, made, it made me realize that um, because these people are sitting 
standing rather in front of this blue window and having some uh, bluish gray color around them would be more effective. Oh, here's another principle that I have not mentioned today that I think about very often. When you're doing uh, figures like this, that is to say, abstracted figures, um, blurry, fuzzy edges are. I'm going oh, to exaggerate the, to make the to make the point. Are an absolute must uh, because. Um, Hard edges give the, give the impression of non-movement, whereas um, blurred edges, it, 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 it's a much more realistic, so counterintuitive, it's a much more realistic feel because if people are moving, they're blurry. And I don't mean that like the camera, I don't mean, but the, the camera of your eye actually perceives movement as as a blur, so to speak. I don't want that. I can defend that statement. I don't have the energy to do it right now. I'm just going to leave it. All right, I'm pretty happy with the anatomy in all those four figures, but as I expected, I'm quite unhappy. Not, not really, but I'm there. They are indeed overdrawn. <laughs> Every time I say that, I think somebody's going to think that I'm talking about my bank account, which is true too, but that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. Now you understand, I'm going to demonstrate, just because you do that and rub doesn't mean you have to settle for whatever happens. So I'm coming back and making a few modifications after the rubbing activity. Does that make sense? All right, I'm just about done, and certainly I've spent enough time, <laughs> too much actually, um, there's some more area. Again, you must learn how to draw the human figure, and it requires two activities, two separate and distinct activities. One is figure drawing, looking at and copying, but the other is you have to learn by rote. You have to learn all those rules. Now, what is a clavicle again? What is a trapezius? You know? What does an elbow really look like from behind? What does a knee look like from the front? What does a bent leg look straight leg? All that stuff. And, woo. and again, I am no expert. I look for, I hope in the next year or so to do an extensive figure drawing class. Um, that would be like a like a 13 week, you know, 13 sessions with people here in North Carolina. Um, just, I just love learning um, the human figure. I love studying it. I always feel like I don't have enough time, but if I'm teaching a class on it, then it'll force me to take the time. And I'm looking forward to that very much. And if I do that, it, yes, it will, it will be recorded. It will be broadcast on YouTube or somewhere. with those crazy pencil marks I just made a minute ago. Of course, I, I dragged the pencil right across this girl in particular. So again, I'm doing that my old trick, painting on both sides of that pencil line so that it says to the viewer, no, this is done on purpose. Whoops.
tiny bit of light on the man's shirt. How about a, a faint earring? Which, which girl needs an earring the most? There we go. Uh, how about over here? Do any of these? Right there. All right. I am finished with this painting, of course, except for the bride's face, which will be a different broadcast if I do a lot. I worked on, oh, the, the man's, the groom's face needs a tiny bit of work. Actually, it was more finished, and then I smudged it up just a minute ago before I started this podcast. Um, okay, I'll fix his lips. I'll fix his bottom lip here in a little while. But I'm going to end this broadcast. Let me uh, take a minute once again, if you don't mind, and sit down. And look at your delightful chats. You guys have been chatting up a storm. Hello, Michael. Van am I on the camera? I am on the in my entire messy studio. Ain't so partly by children. Hello, Michael. Sharon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Michael is Deborah. <laughs> That's right. Sorry, Deborah. <laughs> we should know that. <laughs> Yeah, you know all those old those old artists. Uncle talks about cutting up dead people. Uncle says, I, I referred to this earlier. I'm trying your style on a boat dock painting. I messed it up already. <laughs> Laugh out loud. I used too much too opaque paints, and so I had to fix it. No, I need to redraw the boats. Not so easy. Thank you for trying. Here you see your response. Sounds very much. Oh, in the acrylic stage still. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Art Morbid. Thank you very much. Good to have you on board. I don't know if you're still with us. Thanks for chatting. I think that's the first time I've seen your name. <laughs> Good, you are. Never seen a stream like this before. I don't know if you're still with us, but welcome. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I like you guys. Thank you for making our newcomers feel at home. <laughs> yes, I do need. <laughs> I need AV help sometimes. Oh yeah, <laughs> Deborah, <laughs> that was that was difficult. Deborah's referring to my painting last Saturday. I had earplugs in. I always have earplugs at a live band, but for some reason that it was it was. I don't know. And you, I don't know if you can hear the kind of music I've got. Gentle stuff going in the background. I do not need anything to rev me, rev me up when I'm painting. I need stuff to cool me down. So it was kind of hard. Well, hello, Maraud Bainton. I think it's the first time I've seen your name. You're very welcome. Good to have you on board. Uh, Deborah, I have not done an art class at Dunedin Fine Arts Center. I'll have to look that up. Am I saying that? There's a Dundine, Dunedin, I presume. I have not. Uh, and Murad asks the question, do I start all my paintings with acrylics? And this, the answer is essentially yes. Virtually every one, indeed. All right, so I still have some, will not be painting this evening, going to Greenville an hour and a half from here to celebrate my dear mother's 94th birthday, which was last Friday, and I was there for that. But today's the party, so... 
Uh, I'm squeezing in as much painting as I can before I take off. I have to work on the bride's face, a little bit on the groom's, and uh, of course, I'll take a second look. Typically, here's a teaching moment. Anytime that I've been focusing on, you know, I had my nose really in a painting the way I have this one for the last hour. We're really focused and really focused. Very often when I step away, maybe sleep on it overnight and come back, I see things. Like I may decide that these, this, these flesh tones are all too similar. It crosses my mind as I look at it right now. And, and that is partly just a result of being too focused in right now and I need to get away from it, take a break. Um, so it's very likely that I'll do that. All right, thanks guys for your help and your, your help and your company and your encouragement. I appreciate it. Yeah, happy, happy, birth, happy birthday to my dear mom. I appreciate that. She's, a, she's delightful. I love her to pieces. I tell her all the time I want to grow up to be like her. All right, be back soon, I hope. Bye-bye.